everybody, welcome back to Recordology. This is gonna be fun. So, our friends at Electrohome have recently come out with a bundle, a turntable, and some speakers that go together in a very fashionable and interesting way. This is being put together for people wanting to get into vinyl and wanting to do it with quality components. So, let's check it out. This is Recordology. Well, this looks interesting, doesn't it? We've got the Montrose wireless vinyl record player. This is the Bluetooth model. I believe there is a version without the Bluetooth. And we have the McKinley 2.0 powered bookshelf speakers. Is this a good package for somebody just getting into vinyl that is choosing sound over style? They are choosing to go for the audio quality of vinyl more so than just a design aesthetic. That being said, these are actually very stylish pieces and will fit into a modern home decor, but they're not novelty vintage styled. You know what I mean? Which is really cool because Electra Home in the past has really specialized in the all-in-one kind of space. This is a divergence for them into this space and I'm very excited to see what they've come up with. All right, let's get this stuff out of the boxes. As it happens, there's more boxes inside of those boxes. So let's open up these boxes. Okay, let's unbox. This is the most exciting part, you guys. I love doing this stuff. Really excited to see what this turntable is all about. Okay, we've got a felt platter mat. We've got the turntable and desk cover and everything in there. So let me go ahead and get this out. Everything was pretty well self-contained as a single piece. And then this was on top and obviously the user manual. Let me go ahead and unpackage the rest of this and we'll take a closer look. Okay, now we're really getting someplace. This is awesome, you guys, I'm super excited. So we've got an audio cable here. We do have the user manual. And I'm just gonna flip through it. So you can see there, it looks like it's illustrated. We've got a felt mat, albeit a pretty thick one, no branding on there. And then we've got an accessories box, which I'm guessing will be a counterbalance. Let's go ahead and open it up. We've got a power supply, so it is powered with a DC power supply. And then also in the box, yep, we've got a counterbalance. So it looks like we've got everything we need to make turntable magic. Okay, we're all ready to put it together. Now, I want you guys to keep in mind that this is an entry level product, okay? This is designed for somebody just getting into this and to get them on the right path. So keeping that in mind, so far, I'm very excited with what I see. I love the dark smoked dust cover. I love the fact that it's hinged and attached directly to the turntable. This is their teak color, they call this, and it is a uh, wood, probably a uh, veneer, maybe an MDF veneer. It looks sharp. We got the branding down there, a little plastic protruding branding piece right there. Let's talk about materials. So the actual plinth is a plastic, the, plast the platter itself is plastic as well. You guys know I love metal platters because they're heavier, they have better inertia, which leads to better speed consistency, which leads to better wow and flutter. But again, hit, trying to hit a price point for entry level users, this should be fine. I wouldn't you know, be concerned about it right off the bat. I like the fact they've got it stamped with their branding. They've also got three rubber points of contact, which is really interesting. So if you didn't want to use the included felt mat, you could just put your record right on there. Or if you wanted to give it the felt treatment, you could put it on like that. This is attached with an E-clip, and which means that if this thing, you couldn't just lift this platter off without removing that E-clip. But in order to replace the belt, it is going to be a belt-driven turntable. You would need to pop that clip off. We've shown videos on how to do that before. Interesting that there's this inset piece there. A little bit of give on the platter, but we'll see how that performs. I'm gonna go ahead and put the platter mat on since we've got it. And your 45 adapter lives on this peg back there, but if you have a record with a large hole, there you go. And the head shell is plastic, the tone arm is metal, and this is a combination of a black plastic housing with a metal insert there on the gimbal, and this piece right back here where the weight's going to go is plastic. I'm going to put on the heavy metal counterbalance and I'm going to set that appropriately. This does feature the Audio-Technica 3600L cartridge, which is a very, very respectable entry-level moving magnetic cartridge. Glad to see that on there. 
and it tracks between three and a half and four grams. So I'm gonna set this to three and a half grams. Again, I'm not gonna go through all the procedures on that. I'm thinking that it's in the manual. In fact, let's verify that. They should put that in the manual. Yeah, they've got all this first time setup stuff in here. So if you want to uh, learn how to do that, you don't know how to do it already, that's gonna be in the manual. I'll do that off camera. And then we will take a closer look at the controls. We'll test it out and then we will unbox and test the speakers as well. This does ship with a little temporary tape down here. Unless I'm guessing it's temporary, it looks temporary. Yeah, it's just some tape. And underneath the tape is a little plastic piece just to protect this during transit. And there's another one over here. The dust cover itself actually has little rubber protectors. So you don't need these temporary ones once it's unboxed. Okay, so this is weird. I've never seen this before, but I'm sitting here about to put this on and adjust it. I float it, which I was able to float the tone arm. And then I go to adjust the plastic disc to zero. And to my surprise, it doesn't rotate. This plastic piece doesn't rotate. I have never seen a counterbalance with a non-rotating uh, plastic piece on the front. That's how you zero it out. So I went back to the instructions and they say what you're supposed to do is put it on the back at the zero position and then give it, let's, so let's see, until it clicks probably, then give it one full rotation until it comes back to zero and that should be tracking at three grams. Which is curious, because like I said, this cartridge is designed to track at a minimum of three and a half grams. So let's go ahead and put the, the stylus gauge on here. I'm gonna take off the uh, platter mat so that the, uh, the actual VTA will be accurate. So this, according to them, should be three grams. Let's see what it says. See, this is saying it's only tracking at one gram. So that's gonna give us some errors. I'm gonna go ahead and continue rotating this until we get to three and a half because that's really where you want to be with this. Yeah, that's way more than one full rotation. So be advised, use a stylus gauge. If you don't have a stylus gauge, you're going to have a little bit of difficulty because you can't use the traditional method of floating the tone arm to get that proper tracking weight. I'm, gonna, I'm curious how far on it needs to go to really get to three and a half. All right, so we're at 3.5, which is, is fine. So in fact, that's, like I said, that's like the minimum that you wanna be at for this cartridge. And I had to go pretty far down that shaft. There's maybe a quarter inch gap. So to be precise, you would need this. Now, you can judge it by whether or not the record's skipping, but like we've talked about before, if your cartridge is ta tracking too light, that will actually do more damage than tracking too heavy. So something to be aware of. I wouldn't say it's a red flag, but it's a yellow flag, something to be aware of. Considering this is a beginner's turntable, they probably won't have one of these. That could be a little bit of a concern for a newbie. It's like, great, you know, what am I gonna do? It's not playing right. In my experience, following the instructions, snapping it on, rotating it one full turn, and you could see they've amended this, so I wonder what the original instructions were. Maybe the original part had a rotating edge and this one doesn't, but it says slowly push the counterweight on until it clicks twice. Oh, I didn't do the twice. Maybe that was a problem. Okay, let me, let me push it on. So I'm gonna put it to zero. One, two, okay. Now I'm gonna do one full rotation. I'm gonna put my handy dandy tracking force gauge and according to them, this will be three grams. Let's see. And it gets me to a little over two. So yeah, it's still not, it's still not enough. So that is a concern for sure. Let's go ahead and set it to the right range there. 3.65 works for me. All right, let's proceed. I really like the look of this thing. Let's uh, give it a little bit of a tour now that we've got it set up. So we do have a head shell with Allen screws that will allow you to change out the cartridge, not just the stylus. But again, for entry level, you don't really need to upgrade from that 3600L. That is a fantastic cartridge. It's got a carbon fiber cantilever, all that good stuff. We've got the clip. When you're storing it or moving it, you can put that in place. Glad that we've got a tone arm lift on here. This is fantastic. 
this is interesting. Some of these lift, lift the tone arm higher than the rest. This one does not. So it lifts it higher than the record, obviously, but it doesn't lift it higher than the rest, which is fine. If you experience skipping with your records, even after you know setting this properly, I always say gently push down on the tone arm lift and that makes sure that the full proper weight of the tone arm and stylus are on the record and that way it's not skipping because that it happens all the time on suitcase players especially. So we've got an off 33 and 45 switch. I've never seen an on and off switch and speed switch right here. This is very, very interesting. And one thing that I'm excited about this unit is it doesn't look like anything else out there. Like I have never seen this. I don't know you know, anything about this beyond what we're all discovering together. So I'm going to set it to 33. And let's look at the gimbal back there. Again, it's a black plastic housing, the outer part with what I believe is a metal inner part there. There's the counterbalance and the rear stem. As you can see, the hinge works pretty dang good back there. It seems like it stows that properly. Let's look over on the other corner. Now this has a fantastic feature where you can record your records to USB right from the turntable itself. So it's got a record button, a Bluetooth pairing button there as well. We'll test all that stuff. That'll be, that'll be fun. That'll be part of our video today. Let's look at the back. Okay, on the back we've got RCA outputs. So you can connect this directly to the speakers if you wanted or an external sound system. It does have the grounding post on there and a switchable preamp. We're going to switch this to on because we're not going to be using an external one. I noticed on the website, or maybe it was the Amazon page, that it says it does not have the preamp, and it should be corrected because it obviously does indeed have a preamp. And we've got a power switch and the DC in. That's pretty simple. Not much you need to fiddle with on a day-to-day -day basis back here, but good to know what kind of connections it has. On the bottom, we've got these rubberized feet, which are nice and soft, and they do have a nice pivot to it. It seems like the bottom piece is plastic. They are screwed right into the Masonite bottom panel. That's all there is on the bottom, just the regulatory stuff. And again, this is a veneered MDF, it looks like, with the Masonite bottom panel. Let's go ahead and open up the speakers next. So let us take a look at the speaker side of things. Really quickly on specification, these are the McKinley 2.0 power bookshelf speakers. They've got RCA connections, aux in, adjustable EQ, stereo separation, high order crossover with four inch drivers and one inch silk dome tweeters. So this ought to be really cool. And again, my expectations for these speakers are high because I believe them to be of a high quality manufacturer. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these out and we'll take a closer look. Okay, these look great. I, I love the look of them. They match the record player perfectly we'll see them all together here in a minute i want to talk for a minute about the accessories it does come with the remote which i think is good powered speakers without a remote means that you got to walk over there and make the adjustment of volume or whatever turn them on and off at the speakers we've got speaker wire to connect the two speakers there's going to be an active speaker which is this one and a passive speaker it does have an ac power supply which is good we've got audio cables in here as well and a user manual. So let's look at the speaker itself. First thing I wanna notice, this is, usually I don't go straight to the bottom, but I love how it's on this angled wood riser. I think that that is fantastic. So the speakers are designed to be on, on your desktop or bookshelf or wherever you wanna put them really, but they have a nice, very gradual slant. Something to consider if you're putting something else on top that whatever goes on top will also have that same gradual slant and the faceplate is an mdf we've got the silk dome tweeter there we've got the woofer there this looks to be like an ir receiver with a protective film pull that off electrohome branding very cool there's a little sticker there showing what the led colors indicate you got blue for bluetooth green for rca and yellow for aux we'll peel that off and then we've got a knob plastic knob pretty loose Let's look around back here. We've got the uh, base port on the back. This is the right speaker. And if you invert them, like if you decide to make this the left speaker by just swapping out the cables, be advised that Bluetooth connectivity won't honor that swap. <laughs> so you can swap out the left and right and make this the left, but Bluetooth will still make this the right channel, if you know what I mean. So something to consider. 
Um, down here, we've got a Bluetooth reset button. We've got an aux input, RCA input, speaker terminals, and then the power as well. On the back of the passive speaker, it'll be a lot simpler. Just got the speaker tab terminals down there to connect the two. And we're ready to rock and roll. Power-wise, these guys are 30 watts total power, so 15 watts per speaker. And again, from an entry-level standpoint, that is plenty of power to give you quality, full sound, which is what we're looking for here. This, again, totally designed for the newbie to give them a good, positive introduction to vinyl. So I'm going to go ahead and set the entire thing up, and we'll give it a full test. It is definitely a beautiful thing when it's all set up like this. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm kind of confused why there's an off switch here and an off switch. You know what? No, I was going to say that stops the platter from rotating. We'll discover how all that works here in a minute. Because sometimes there's an auto stop on and off, but you would have to choose that over the speed. So that doesn't make any sense. Not 100% sure why. The next thing we need to do before we actually run the test is to check the speed consistency. So I'm going to change the lights, put the strobe disc on, and we'll go from there. Okay, let's go ahead and take this platter mat off. We'll replace it with this Hudson Hi-Fi stroboscopic disc. Okay, and we're ready to go. I'm going to lift this up here, rotate over. We are at 33 RPM. So we're gonna be looking at this line right here. And to me, that looks like it's just about perfect. Let's get a closer look. Again, we are looking right here and that looks dead accurate, which I am very excited to see. That is fantastic. This does have technology built in to sense the speed accuracy and to make sure that it has an accurate speed. So I'm glad that it's calibrated appropriately. Next, we're gonna be looking up here as we go into 45 RPM mode. Please, please, please also be accurate. And look at that, it is dead accurate, you guys. That is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I'm so glad to see that. Time to give it a listen, guys. Okay, I'm on the front stereo mics now. Let's go ahead and dust the record. I'll be using the uh, Enoch Light record that we've used in the past. It's just in such a handy record for testing. So let me go ahead and dust the record and go from there. This is actually a very, very good record to use to test. So got a record spinning, 33 RPM. We'll drop it at the beginning. Let me go ahead and power these on. And we are ready to give it a listen. Okay, so the funny thing is it's paired to a Bluetooth speaker in the other room, which is not what I intended. So I need to shut off the Bluetooth mode. And there we go. Okay. First impressions, they have very good low tonality. They're a slight bit muddy, but really not bad whatsoever. Let's try a couple different selections. So if they sound a little muddy to my ears, that's no worries whatsoever because we have sound shaping controls. We can adjust the treble up or the bass down. Of course, I do it at the end of a song. I'm 
excited about it. Notice the lack of crackle and pop, which are not the Keebler Elves or the Rice Krispie Treat guys. That is a clean record, a good condition stylus, and a good sound system. You don't have to have that crackle. Now, I like a good record crackle as much as the next guy, believe me. However, sometimes I like just pure analog sound, and that's what you get when you're connected like this. However, this particular model also has the added benefit of Bluetooth, which takes it out of the analog domain and puts it into a digital domain. This is going to be a lossy Bluetooth connection. Will you notice it? No, not on these speakers, not with this device. It is Bluetooth 5.0, but it is going to be a lossy codec. So it is basically turning the analog sound into streaming. If you wanna maintain that complete analog workflow, then just connect it like I did now with the RCA audio jacks and you're good to go. If you want the convenience of the record player quite a distance away from the speakers, up to 30 meters, I believe it is, or is it 10 meters? 10 meters, I think 10 meters, that will give you that wireless connectivity. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove said RCA connections. Okay, there you go. There's the receipt, it is proof positive that this is connected. Oops, don't do that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to switch the input to Bluetooth and attempt to pair this device. So let's go ahead and test out the Bluetooth on the other side of this record here. Interesting. I can actually hear a difference between the analog and the digital. This definitely sounds a little bit digitized. Doesn't really even sound compressed. It just sounds a little bit more digital. So let's try this track right here. So that is a convenience if you are interested in that functionality. These will obviously serve the speakers as standalone Bluetooth speakers as well, even if you're not using this particular turntable to transmit that Bluetooth. So overall, I'm thinking this is a fantastic starting unit, assuming that the new user can accurately set the tracking force. That's my biggest concern at this point. So let's test out this uh, USB recording feature. So I'm gonna put a USB drive right there. I'm going to play my record. And by the way, I've switched back to the analog cables. I just, I just like that better. I'm not a huge fan of the Bluetooth with vinyl. Let's go ahead and hit record. And it is recording and I will now play back for you this recorded file. are this is definitely a thumbs up from me a fantastic unit i express my concerns it's not perfect but it's pretty dang close also the price point is very good i would recommend checking the links down below so you can see exactly what the price is at any given moment as of the publication of this it was a very reasonable price for a beginner so check that out but definitely a great starting point a great entry point into vinyl as far as I can tell. All right guys, that was awesome. A wholehearted thumbs up. If you are interested, links down below, but I wanna say a very special thank you to you for joining us here today. Give us a thumbs up. Definitely hit subscribe if you haven't done so already, but that's gonna do it for now guys. So happy record hunting, and we'll see you next time.